So, um, I think we are ready now. Um, first of all, uh, I must uh, thank you very warmly for this uh, invitation to speak to you today. Um, I'm very fortunate that this is actually the third time I've been in Norway in the past 13 months. Um, I've never been here before, but I feel um, uh, very much at home here, and uh, I've uh, so enjoyed uh, each of my visits uh, to uh, this country. I, I, I seem to feel a, a particular affinity uh, with Norway. I think there are many things that, uh, that we all share. <laughs> And of course, Norway already uh, uh, knows a great deal about restorative justice uh, and the values of restorative justice particularly. Um, perhaps more than any other country, it's interested and involved in peacemaking around the world. Um, and of course, through your mediation boards and uh, the uh, uh, NMS, which uh, is throughout the country, uh, you've used restorative processes that have proved highly satisfying for uh, many of the victims and offenders who've taken part. Um, even more significantly, perhaps, Norway has a long tradition of liberal thought, of rational debate, and of a humane treatment of the people in its criminal justice system. Uh, while the criminal justice policies of many other Western democracies, and perhaps more in Britain than most, um, are driven by a mixture of ideology and media hyperbole, uh, it seems that in Norway, at least from an outsider's perspective, uh, there's still the capacity to retain um, the uh, uh, a kind of reasoned consideration of evidence when deciding on its criminal justice policy. This seems to be achieved within uh, a normative framework of a desire for democratic dialogue and other restorative justice values, including the restoration of relationships, the repair of loss and injury, the empowerment of individuals and other fundamental human rights specified in the Universal De Declaration of Human Rights and, and other uh, United Nations instruments. So within that normative framework, I'd like to present the evidence uh, as I believe it currently stands on the effects and effectiveness of a particular kind of restorative justice, uh, what we call face-to-face -face conferencing, that's been the subject of our 15-year-long program of rigorous research in Australia and Britain. And it seems to me that Norway's propensity for rational and liberal thought might provide fertile ground for that, that evidence in terms of uh, future implementation. So in this presentation, um, this is what I plan to do. Um, first of all, I'll define what I mean by face-to-face -face restorative justice, and I'll draw distinctions between, uh, between that and uh, mediation, which uh, is, a, of course, a very familiar word in Norway. Um, and I do that not so much because I have a very complete understanding of mediation as it is practiced here, but because um, I find that actually the term restorative justice um, has uh, uh, been applied to a profusion of, of practices around the world. Uh, they're given the label restorative justice, uh, but I think it's easy to um, misunderstand exactly what we're talking about when we use uh, those words. So I think it is important to uh, specify rather carefully uh, the kind of restorative justice practice that's the subject of our research. I then uh, uh, will discuss uh, the conditions under which we've tested the effectiveness of face-to-face -face restorative justice. And then I'll pose a number of questions about those effects um, on reoffending patterns. Um, and I'm going to do it that way because 
whereas the effects um, as demonstrated by our research on victims seem very clear cut, uh, the effects on offenders are actually quite variable. And so uh, I'm always striving to find um, a, a sim simple but uh, accurate way of um, explaining what the effects on offenders have been. Um, and I'll also briefly discuss um, uh, our results on uh, cost-benefit ratios, as um, I'm sure that even Norway is not impervious uh, to those considerations. Um, and throughout this presentation, um, I'll draw attention particularly to findings on uh, the use of restorative justice in addition to normal criminal justice processing through the courts for serious offences, because I think that that is um, uh, one of its most promising applications, rather than simple diversion, um, although I'll be talking about that as well. And I'll also uh, uh, be talking about the effects of restorative justice on offenders who are serving uh, custodial sentence, sentences or who have been sentenced to um, terms of probation in which uh, they have to uh, uh, take part in community uh, supervision activities. Um, because these, uh, these actually appear to be some of the most promising areas for restorative justice and maybe of particular uh, interest to uh, prosecutors and judges uh, in this audience. And I will conclude with some uh, policy implications of our findings that I hope will be useful to you. So, uh, with all that in mind, um, um, I know that uh, there's already been some discussion as I uh, sat into the Norwegian <laughs> just now uh, about the definition of restorative justice. And I think this was probably the, uh, the definition that was put up, um, uh, Tony Marshall's famous uh, definition from 10 years ago or, or so. Um, it's in many ways a highly unsatisfactory definition. And it's, um, it's an attempt to um, encapsulate something that one sees happening when the people who own the dispute, um, in uh, Nils Christie's words, uh, actually are given it back. And uh, so what uh, Tony Marshall observed happening here was that there was a collective uh, resolution of uh, the uh, uh, of the whole um, dis dispute and harm that had emerged from from the uh, the offence, and uh, collective decisions about what to do about it in the future. But um, as to what is to be restored and by whom and so on, all that is left uh, un unspoken in this definition, um, and uh, it certainly is an extremely uh, difficult concept, uh, really, to uh, put one's finger on. I do want to just spend a few moments uh, uh, explaining how face-to-face -face restorative justice conferencing, which has been the subject of our research program, differs from